Yeah, so let's get to really one of the hot button issues in Washington right now. Should Washington have a hand in bailing out the automotive industry? Uh, the, the heads of the big three have already gone to Washington to make their case, and it's in Congress's hands. They're going to hold hearings Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this next week. Joining us from different sides of the aisle, different chambers of Congress, with very different points of view on this issue, we welcome Senator Debbie Stabenow of Michigan and Congressman Jeb Henderling of Texas. And I welcome you both back. Thank you for your time today. My pleasure. Congressman Henderling, you are dead set against a bailout from Congress for the automotive industry. Why? Well, first, let me say what I'm for. Clearly, the economy uh, is very challenged. What I would do, number one, is make sure that we don't increase taxes on working families, as was included in the last Democrat budget. Second of all, I'd level fund the government so we could give more tax relief to working families. And third, I would zero out the tax on jobs and investments, the capital gains tax, for at least two years. We could have a trillion dollars coming into our economy if we did that. But why not? Why, why should not we decide? Help out the Get to the point about the uh, automakers and why you don't want to help them out. Well, it's not that I don't want to help them out, but why do I want to help them at somebody else's expense? Tell me what industry isn't hurting now. The job engine in America is small business. That's where three quarters of our jobs come from. But because we don't know the names necessarily of the local beautician shops, the local transmission repair shop, they need capital too. Why are the big three getting it and they're not? Senator Stebbin, what about that? The moral hazard issue, is that a stumbling block for Congress to provide aid to the uh, auto industry itself? Well, first, let me say this is more broadly about whether or not we're going to make things in this country, whether or not we're going to manufacture anymore. Uh, we have one out of 10 people working in America who work directly or indirectly for the auto industry. It covers every industry. You have more computer power in your automobile than you do in anything else that you own. So we're talking about a basic industry that altogether employs about three million people and the problem we've had so we've had no focus on a manufacturing strategy in a global economy we've already lost four million jobs in this country Senator and the Stabenow? bottom line the economy i know in listening to your show all the time as we talk about the bottom line the economy you know what the bottom line is people aren't working they don't have a job so they can't go out and buy something Senator Stabenow, and a lot of manufacturing happens in this country it just happens in other parts of the country Country where the labor isn't as expensive as what has happened in Michigan because of the unions and all their impositions. That really actually isn't true anymore. I, ha I have to tell you that, first of all, uh, first of all, the auto industry and the UAW created the middle class of this country. But we have seen the UAW negotiate new contracts that go from $28 an hour to $14 an hour. They have been willing to take health care costs for retirees off the back of the companies and assume that liability starting in 2010. I mean, we basically have a situation where the industry has turned, they are rushing to the new vehicles that are going to be a mainstay in getting us off of foreign oil, and they didn't cause these financial markets and the credit crunch to happen. Senator, this is a bridge loan that, to help them get to the future. Congressman Hensling? If, if, listen, there's, if somebody wanted to give them a bridge loan, uh, Uncle Sam has just poured out hundreds of billions of dollars to large financial institutions. The reason that Detroit is in trouble is because they have been paying two-thirds more for their labor costs than their competitors, and in any survey of customer satisfaction, the big three rank among the lowest. So they're producing products that are expensive that people don't want to buy. And ultimately, if you're trying to create jobs in America, and it's news to me that the UAW created the middle class, why not give $50 billion to small businesses? You could capitalize 2 million small businesses in America with that. That's the job engine of America. And uh, Senator Sabanow, would bankruptcy be so horrible for the auto industry they could offload their legacy costs, they could move the pensions uh, over to the PBGC, they could start with a clean slate and, let's face it, they would have to renegotiate their labor agreements with the UAW and perhaps get a, a more affordable labor agreement and, and start making cars again. First of all, bankruptcy would be a disaster. I mean, what they're talking about is not Chapter 11, but Chapter 7, which would involve liquidation, would involve losing our manufacturing capacity. You know, we think about it. We already have the uh, changes that people want in the labor agreements 
already happened. We have already seen downsizing. I sit in Michigan right now where I can tell you firsthand, plants have closed, downsizing has occurred, right sizing, whatever you want to call it. We are now poised to move to the new vehicles to get us off of foreign oil. But what is being talked about now is bankruptcy, which would take 750,000 retirees, take their pensions, put it into a pension guarantee fund that's already $12 billion short. The taxpayers would have to move in and pay for that. Instead of that, we can help the industry remain strong. When you help the auto industry, you help aerospace, you help defense. How do, how do we make our tanks if we aren't able to well, manufacture? This is a bottom line question of jobs and, and the future and of the economy it's in a America. Difficult issue here. Uh, Congressman Henson, I'll give you the last word very quickly if you can. Well, I'm glad the senator brought up taxpayers. I mean, who's going to pay for this? Everybody's struggling today. And when are we going to quit borrowing money from the Chinese and sending the debt to our children and our grandchildren? There is a better way to get the economy moving, and it's not helping out these people who are slave to the big labor unions and are making products that people don't want to buy. All right. It if is I not might just say one quick thing, sure. our companies are competing with China. We're competing with countries, China, South Korea, Japan, Germany, all of whom are paying for health care, paying for innovation. They understand manufacturing. We're losing a middle class because we have not had policies that understand how you create jobs in this country. We really appreciate the time you both took to come be with us today. We thank you much for that uh, as well. Good to see you again. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.